Good morning and a very warm welcome to Kegworth Baptist Chirps. Thank you for joining us this morning. If you're a regular member of our online congregation, welcome back. And if you're new to Kegworth Baptist Church, thank you so much for joining us. Before we start this morning's worship, let's see what's happening in the church this week. We have the following events at Kegworth Baptist Church this week. Friday mornings, 10 a.m. till 12 is our Oasis Coffee Morning in the hall. Sunday mornings, 10.30 is our worship here in church. Also, Sunday mornings, 10 a.m. till 12 p.m. is our warm welcome space, which is separate from the service. Come and join us for a cup of tea, a chat, some quiet time or read a book. Everybody is welcome to all of our Kegworth Baptist Church events. Also, if you need to contact us, you can email us at mail at kegwithbaptist.org.uk. So let us start this morning's worship with a wonderful song of worship. message today is about a surrendered life to Jesus and the abundant life we have when we follow him with this attitude of total surrender. I'll read from Ephesians 5 verses 1 and 2 from the Passion Bible which is a paraphrase. Be imitators of God in everything you do 
for then you will represent your father as his beloved sons and daughters and continue to walk surrendered to the extravagant love of Christ for he surrendered his life as a sacrifice for us. His great love for us was pleasing to God like an aroma of adoration, a sweet healing fragrance. The dictionary definition of the word surrender is to deliver up, to yield to another, to resign, to relinquish. When two nations are in conflict and one side can no longer win, surrender might be offered or asked for. There are two types of surrender, conditional and unconditional. With conditional surrender, the terms of surrender are negotiated beforehand so the loser has some idea of the consequences and what they can hold on to as hostilities cease. With unconditional surrender, the loser must throw themselves onto the mercy and grace of the victor. The victor calls all the shots and can make any demands and take any actions they so desire. I want to look at three points this morning to help us understand these verses. The first is Christ's example. Christ lives in uninterrupted unity and love with the Father and Holy Spirit. Even when he was on earth as human, that bond was there. The exception for this was for those hours on the cross when he cried out, My God, why have you forsaken me? Christ's love for the Father was demonstrated by his obedience day by day, as well as fulfilling the mission he was given to be the perfect sacrifice for sin to restore our relationship with the Father. This obedience was especially tested in the Garden of Gethsemane. Here, Jesus had the victory by consciously surrendering his own will. His love for his Father and knowing his Father's love for him carried him through this difficult trial and enabled him to see his mission through to the end. The sacrifice on the cross not only demonstrates the Son's obedient love for the Father, but we are told it shows Christ's great love for us. What should our response be? Well, verse 1, if, in, verse one in Ephesians 5 gives the answer, Be imitators of God, of Christ, in everything you do. Jesus knew who he was. When we know who we are, we can have the same surrendered love that is like a pleasing sacrifice to God. We need to know who we are in Christ. That is our identity. We're saints, sons and daughters of the living King. We need to know how much we are loved by the Father and the Son. We are his beloved. We need to know that any refining or pruning that happens in our lives, that's those difficult times, is for our good and for our spiritual growth to make us more like Christ. And we need to know that for whatever he calls us to do, he will provide all that is necessary to do this. The second point is that when we surrender, the unexpected happens, as it is God who is in charge. When we surrender our lives to a loving God, we are no longer in control. We recognise that he made us and that he desires to use us, to partner with us in his plan of bringing salvation to the world. So I wonder how many of you listening today could have envisaged that when you gave your life to Christ, where you would be today and what you have accomplished for God's kingdom. When we walk surrendered to the love of Christ, our spiritual journey is filled with unexpected directions. I'll give a couple of examples. The first is Mary and Joseph. Mary, a teenager, is visited by an angel and told that she will have a son who will reign over the house of Jacob forever. Her response, I am the Lord's servant, may your word to me be fulfilled. After Joseph found out Mary was pregnant, an angel visited him to tell him not to be afraid to take Mary as his wife. God's plan of salvation risked Mary being stoned for adultery. They were visited by Magi, who brought costly gifts. They became refugees in Egypt. They endured gossiping, questioning, slander and insinuation throughout their lives. And then Mary had the agony of watching Jesus being crucified and the joy of seeing the resurrected Christ. 
Did they think that they would, sorry, did they think that would be their life's journey when they surrendered to God's will? Another example, David is a friend of mine. He's a working class lad and a roofer in Glossop. But when he, when he came to the Lord, he didn't read much, so he watched the Jesus of Nazareth film over and over again. In the 1990s, he was challenged to go out to Romania to provide practical help. He was so broken by the poverty that he saw out there among the gypsy communities. The first home he built was a one-room shack from wood for a mother and children living in a tatty tent on wasteland. He has built many brick houses since then, partnering with local mayors and churches, getting sponsorship and building teams from churches in the UK, Western Europe and from America. He is now preaching and Bible teaching, training young men to become Bible teachers and pastors, as well as helping to pastor a Romanian church in Slough by making regular visits over to the UK. He remains surrendered to God's love and leading in his life as he serves his Saviour, Jesus Christ. When we surrender our lives to King Jesus, we throw ourselves on his mercy and grace. But we have the confidence that his love for us is extravagant. He knows what is best for us and will lead us in unexpected ways if we will let him rule in our lives. So my third point is this, what type of surrender have you given? Has your surrender to the extravagant love of Christ been unconditional? Do you believe that Jesus is king over all? Do you trust in his great love and mercy that he is preparing and refining you just as he is preparing a place for you with himself? Are you willing to give your all for him just as he gave his all for you? Has your surrender been unconditional? Or has your surrender been conditional? You've decided to follow Christ, but there are areas of your life that are no-go for the work of the Holy Spirit in you. Destructive habits, ongoing sin, selfish attitudes in which Christ is not displayed in your life. God wants you to partner with him in his salvation plan for the world. But if you hold back, how can he use you to your full potential? If you are disobedient to what he has asked you to, asked of you because it infringes on the conditions you set for your surrender to him, what does this tell you of your love for Christ? I'll just read Ephesians 5, 1 and 2 again. Be imitators of God in everything you do. For then you will represent your father as his beloved sons and daughters and continue to walk surrendered to the extravagant love of Christ for he surrendered his life as a sacrifice for us. His great love for us was pleasing to God like an aroma of adoration, a sweet healing fragrance. Amen. Take
Thank you for your message this morning. If anybody needs any prayer or practical support, please do contact us and we will do our very best to help you in whatever way we can. And let us finish this morning's worship by blessing one another with the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.